Time to catch up with UTRGV women's basketball. He's Larry Tidwell. He's the head coach of the UTRGV women's basketball team. And this is Jonah Goldberg, media, re media relations guru for UTRGV. Well, Coach, uh, one game last week, a 78-56 victory over Chicago State. And uh, with that win, you clinch your second straight winning season and just the second in this program's history at the D1 level. Well, I tell you, Jonah, when you have one game in a, one week, I mean, one game per week, and we've done two of that now for three out of the last four weeks, I feel like I'm a football coach again back in my high school days. <laughs> you know, you play on Friday night. I liked uh, two games a week. I liked three games a week. and uh, But we did come away with a nice win, 78-56. Uh, it was senior day. Uh, Raquel Preston and Jada Bennett were on it. Had a really nice ceremony for them. Good job by Hannah Burleson getting all that set up. And then we had a Jam the Gym for Juliet, which we had a nice crowd. We got $4,000 raised for uh, Juliet for wow. to continue her rehab. And we're very, very pleased about that. What a great young lady, what a great family. And then we came away with a very important uh, conference win over Chicago State, 78-56. Uh, in that game, uh, Shantae Goff proved once again why she's one of the better players in the WAC. She took over the game, particularly in the second quarter. She had 20 points at half. Second half, she shared the ball, moved it around. She's not worried about points. She wants wins. And so she had an outstanding game, 21 points. She had six rebounds, four assists, and, and just did a really good job for me. Uh, Bernicia Peters with 10 points, mm -hmm. solid, attacked the rim, dropped it off, good defense. Uh, inside play from uh, Hilder and Nishka, very, very solid. And then we got really good games from Raquel Preston at nine. Turk, Adele Turk came off the mm -hmm. bench. She hit nine points, hit three threes. Uh, Nichelle Hyman just continues to get better. But my gray group came out, Angie Villarreal. I mean, she had a really nice game. I love seeing that. Mitch Mercilita, Lile Havili, Sika Kusick, Tristan Murphy, Laura Van Tilburg all contributed to what we were trying to do at 12 out of 13 scores. So very solid performance by the Vaqueros, and uh, we want to continue that as we travel to New Mexico State on Saturday night. How important was it to be able to get in all 13, or to get 13 players into a game uh, this late in the season? Well, it's very good. Uh, gray, I call them orange and gray. And, and gray with Angie Villarreal, with Turk, with uh, Hyman, with Sika, with Laura Van Tilburg, Tristan, Mitch. I mean, that group worked hard for me every day in practice, and I, I couldn't be more happy with those guys. They're freshmen, they're sophomores, they're moving up, and uh, they're getting a lot of experience, but they came out and played well. And uh, you got to appreciate what they do each and every day. Well, you, you mentioned Goff took over in that second quarter. I think she scored 17 or 15 of her points in that I quarter think 17, alone. 17, yes. Uh, she'd had a three earlier in the game. But she just made her mind up that she was going to make some things happen, and she got to the rim. She hit some open shots and, and just does what she does practically every game, with the exception of a couple of games this year. She's been spotless on the floor, dropping it, dropping dimes, assisting defensively, rebounding, and just scoring. And a couple of games this year she's been sick and we didn't get the production we usually have. And it just shows that she's very valuable to this team and I appreciate what she does, not only on the floor as a player, but also with her leadership. What's the emotion like before the game when you're walking those seniors out to uh, on the onto the home court for the last time with Preston and Bennett. Well, I tell you, uh, Raquel Preston, we've been here together for years. You know, she uh, one of the ones that's left that I inherited from the previous regime, and and she is a fighter. She's a competitor. I appreciate what she brings to the team, and uh, has just continued to get better. She's played inside at five nine two years. This year we moved her to the three, and she's really had a nice year, shooting uh, at over a forty percent clip. And that's just outstanding on her part. Jada Bennett, uh, I, w I watched her play when she was at Sherman High School and went to North Florida, transferred here, had to sit a year, then sustained an ACL injury, and we haven't got completely back from that. But um, she's going to graduate on time, and we're very happy with, with Jada. Great young lady, great, just a great young lady, I'm telling you. And she's going to graduate, and 
and we'll see what the future holds for her. And as if that wasn't emotional enough, you know, you mentioned Jam the Jim for Juliet. <laughs> How cool was that? Get bring her out onto the court at the end of halftime. Well, I tell you, this is a young lady who last June was involved. Uh, got hit head on. She was standing in front of her car, crushed both of her legs. She's been through 16 major surgeries. She was in, at one time, she was in a hospital in San Antonio 12 weeks in a row. And expenses are, are ex very, very high. She's back now home. She got home, um, oh, I would say around August. And she's been going to the doctor's hospital of Renaissance with the extensive rehab that they have there. They're doing a great job with her. But again, as her insurance mounts, I mean, we're just trying to be there to help out, to make sure that she uh, she's there to get the best rehab possible. And we raised a little over four thousand dollars for her, and we just love the family. We love Juliet; she's a team sister, and uh, but just what a great family. Also, I just want to do everything I can to make sure she gets back at the level that she's uh, competed at before as a power lifter and a cheerleader. And she's such an inspiration. When she walked out onto that court, she was smiling. I mean, to, to see somebody who's been through all that, <laughs> to be able to smile, you know, whenever you think you have yeah. problems, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> she's a tremendous young lady. I mean, in first class, and I saw it on TV, you know, when they announced what had happened. Did not know the young lady, did not know the family. Took about two weeks to get in touch with them, to let them know that we were sincere, you know. They didn't know who we were. And, and so through uh, Michelle Marquez and through Amanda Ramirez and uh, uh, Ariana Tanguma, we got in touch with the family. I've gone up, had dinner with them a couple of times. We visited, the team visited with her during Christmas holidays. And so we're there for her and, and we want to let her know that we really care about her. So we're going to make good things happen. And we're going to continue our relationship with this young lady. She wants to be a marine biologist, and she wants to come to UTRGB. So that's a good combination. Marine biology is one of our strong suits here. Yes, so it is. Very exciting to see what the future may hold for her, and very exciting for what you were able to do for her. And, uh, you know, I think everybody needs to thank you and your entire team for putting this together. Uh, this is, I mean, that's something special, and it shows how much you really care. Well, I tell you, we do care about the Valley. You know, I've been here. Three years we've been here, myself, Hannah, Double A, Anthony Anderson, Gabe's been with us two years, you know, John Ishii was here. And we've uh, we've put a, over 3,000 hours of documented community service on the time cards that, that we've done, and we're very proud to be a part of the Valley. We're very proud to be, to be involved with the Valley. And, uh, you know, we do everything from uh, going to the hospitals at uh, Renaissance, to Edinburgh, to the Children's Hospitals. We work with Salvation Army. We work with Be The Match Bone Marrow Registry. But we love working with uh, Tim Smith on Channel 5. We do a lot of different things with him. The uh, All the police departments, we enjoy the Nights Out Against Crime, Boys and Girls Clubs, you name it, we're a part of it. And we want to continue that as we want to let the people in the Valley know that, that we're here and we're involved in the valley. We're just not coming in, stepping out, and leaving. We want to be involved in what's going on in the valley. And then the other big thing that happened, because you won, you clinched another winning season. That is very nice. I mean, you know, we came here three years ago. They would not had a winning season in uh, 32 years, I believe, last year when we went 19 and 15, went to the postseason for the first time ever, have come back this year, and uh, we're 16 and 12. We've clinched a winning season. And, and Jonah, this has been a, a season that's been full of uh, injuries. You know, we've had Mary Savoy out now for 12 weeks. When she got hurt, she was averaging 14 and 12, a double-double. We've had Anushka Maldonado out for a, a three to four game period. We've had Bernicia Peters out for a three or four game period. Lele Havili has been out. She was not released until uh, from a knee injury until conference game started. Jada Bennett has been out the entire year. Sika Kuzik was out, oh, for about six weeks with a concussion, and she lost a lot of valuable weight, uh, you know, workout time that would lead to more playing time for her. And so it, it's been, it, it's been a little bit uh, frustrating from the fact that, that we don't have all of our players on the floor, but it is what it is. You deal with it, you move on, and. 
next one steps up and that's when you have your your Hilders, your Anuskas, you know, your Rock, they step it up their play, Shantae, of course, Bernicia, but that bench, again, coming is so important, you know, for us with, you know, with all the young ladies are on the bench, they make practices better, and then they're ready to step up when their number's called, and so, and we got a lot of young players on our bench. We've got, uh, as you mentioned, we've only got two seniors. And so we have a lot coming back, a lot of fire, a firepower coming back, and that's next year. And we're not worried about next year. We're always worried about this year. And we want to finish strong when we head to New Mexico State and then on to the conference tournament. Yeah, New Mexico State, it's an interesting matchup for right before the conference tournament because <laughs> it's it's 1-2 right there. It is 1-2, and it's going to be their senior night. Mark Trek and his staff, that team is first class. They, You cannot say anything negative about that coaching staff or those players, they represented us last year really good against Maryland in the NCAA tournament. And, and they just step it up. They're first class. And I've known Mark a long time. When he was a head coach at USC, I was an associate head coach at TCU. We would play USC. We, we, we always wanted to battle the best. And so we played USC, UCLA, those people. And, and uh, you got to tip your hat to Mark. He's, he's had a tremendous run there. And uh, we respect their program. We do not fear their program, but we respect it. And we're going to go out there and play hard and see if we can uh, can upset them before we go to uh, the conference tournament. What do they do so well that's allowed them to go on this kind of run this year? Well, they've uh, they got everybody back from last year, and it gets down to players. They've got players. And they've been pretty well uh, injury-free on a lot of different things. And... They've uh, been consistent. You know, you got Freeman in there. You got Weber. You got oh, you you just name it. The, they got this freshman Brooke Salas. They've got the point guard. I just love the point guard Janice Davis. And then you look over there, and they got Abby Scott coming off the bench. I mean, Tamir Wynn. I mean, they have a Mariah Mack. They have a solid program. So, yeah, it's players, <laughs> and, and Mark's an excellent coach. So that has a lot to do with it too. Well, going into the WAC tournament, and I want to just ask you about it briefly because I don't know when we'll be able to do our next show. You're going straight to Vegas from New Mexico State, We're going aren't you? straight to Vegas. Uh, we're, we play Saturday afternoon at New Mexico State, and we couldn't get out till Sunday. So we fly back home Sunday, and then we turn around and leave on Monday. Doesn't make much sense. So we're going to take a bus from uh, New Mexico State. We're going to drive to Flagstaff, Arizona that night, spend the night. And I'm going to get up the next morning, and we're going to increase our student experience, student-athlete experience, and we're going to go to uh, the Grand Canyon. Um, out of all of our staff and kids, I think there's only three that have seen the Grand Canyon. I want them to see that. I want them to see Hoover Dam. I'm an old uh, history teacher in high school, so I want to go back to some of the roots I used to teach about. But uh, going to see the Grand Canyon and going to see Hoover Dam is probably – two of the most magnificent miracles I've ever seen. <laughs> and so we want to do that, but we're also going to be working out. We're going to be watching video, and we'll, we're going to get ready and hopefully get another chance to get to the finals of the WAC tournament and see if we can't get to the NCAA tournament. I had the opportunity to go to the Hoover Dam last year, the day before the tournament started. That is an awesome experience. It's an really awesome experience. And, again, it just – goes to show you that you know anything can be accomplished if you put your mind to it and you look at the Grand Canyon or the Hoover Dam my gosh these accomplishments were incredible the people who made the Hoover Dam actually expected the Hoover Dam to outlast human civilization so they created a star chart that they put in the ground so <laughs> so future alien civilizations would be able to understand what happened there but I tell you what, Jonah, that's a good history lesson. I appreciate that, and I will look for that star chart next Monday when we're there. That's awesome. And then the WAC tournament, uh, hope to be playing three games in four days. But, you know, you've played a tough schedule and a lot of games in a row early on to try and help you get prepared for that kind well, of the thing. thing. The thing is, Jonah, as you look at the record, we have 16 and 12, 28 ball games. Out of the, and we'll play one more, a total of 29 ball games. We played 18 on the road. 18 and 11 is what we played. 18 road games, 
11 only. That's probably as many or more than anybody in Division I of Flame Road Gym. And so we're used to the road. We're road warriors, and hopefully this will help us as we go into New Mexico State and then go into Las Vegas. And we're going to go in there ready to play. We're going in there focused, and we're going to see what happens. Well, UTRGV is at New Mexico State Saturday at 2 p.m. That game will be on the WAC Digital Network. And then they're off to WAC Vegas. I guess some people call it Las Vegas. <laughs> but they'll be taking on somebody in the quarterfinals. Uh, game time to be determined. You can check OUTRGV.com for that once it's finalized. The bracket will come out Saturday afternoon. And the quarterfinals and semifinals will be on the WAC Digital Network. The championship game, which will be... That, that Saturday, semifinals are Friday, championship game is on ESPNU. All we ask is that you mute it and turn up the audio that you can hear <laughs> online, uh, courtesy of yours truly, through our YouTube channel. We'll have a link up there at GoUTRGV.com. He's Larry Tidwell. He's the head coach of the UTRGV women's basketball team. This is John Goldberg, the man, the myth, the legend with UTRG Media Relations. Get your bees up. <laughs>